Well, hi, church. During our message on Sunday, we had QR codes on the screen so that you could ask questions about how the church should handle the tricky abortion issue. And a few of you took advantage of asking some questions. We had questions submitted via the QR codes and then asked in person out in the lobby. And so I wanted to just take opportunity to address some of those questions with you. The first question that we received asks how we as Christians should think about this abortion issue in light of the fact that some people challenge us because of what's happening in foster care. And there's this argument that if Christians don't care about foster children, then it's disingenuous for Christians to talk about pro-life position regarding abortion. So what should we think about that issue? Here would be my response. The statistics in America tell us that there's about 380,000 children in foster care. Now, there's about 400,000 churches in the United States of America. That means that if just one family from every church would step up and adopt a child out of foster care, the Church of Jesus Christ could eliminate the foster care crisis issue. So I would certainly strongly urge you to consider participating in the foster care system. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Mandy and I spent several years training foster parents. We were responsible for six counties in the Upper Peninsula in Michigan to train foster parents, and we would love to discuss with you from our experience how to get involved as a foster parent. I believe that the Church of Jesus Christ should care for vulnerable people, especially foster children. So we would love to talk with you about how to get involved in that area. That being said, if you're dealing with someone making an argument with you that we can't be pro-life because we haven't done enough for foster care, I would simply say a couple things. Number one, those who are involved in foster care know that Christians are actively involved in the foster care system. I would say that the primary source of recruiting foster parents comes from going to churches and other faith-based organizations. Number two, though, I would also say the one struggle does not mean that we should give up on another issue. So just because there's a problem in foster care doesn't mean that we should compound that problem by aborting children. We can, as a church, focus on two things at the same time. We can focus on helping with the foster care crisis in our country. We can focus on helping the crisis with abortion in our country. And so we can coach parents to be better parents in the foster system. We can also coach and love on and help mothers who are finding themselves suddenly pregnant. We can do both at the same time. And I think throughout history, the Church of Jesus Christ has done a good job at caring for hurting and vulnerable people. In fact, the whole history of the church tells us that it was the Church of Jesus Christ, it was the Pietist movement in the 17 and 1800s that started hospitals, that cared for orphan and and build orphanages. The Church of Jesus Christ had done such a great job at doing justice for so long. We got off track a little bit in the 1900s when the fundamentalist controversy started and we thought that social justice meant that we weren't preaching the gospel and so a few of our churches that cared about the gospel said we don't want to be associated with the social justice churches that are kicking the gospel off to the side. We did. We got a little bit off track and we were gospel only instead of gospel leading to justice. But I think in the last 10 years especially, we're seeing the Church of Jesus Christ come back to where the Church of Jesus Christ historically always has been, that the gospel leads us to be justice-oriented, Jesus-loving people. And so that's what we would want to say to those who would challenge us in that area. You know, another question that came was, what should we as Christians do if if my spouse and I want to be involved, this was one of our questions, if my spouse and I want to get involved, what should we do next? Do you have some concrete next steps for us or should we just kind of figure it out on our own? You know, there were two organizations that I mentioned in the message. Love, Inc., which is based out of Buffalo, is a Wright County organization, and it provides some crisis support needs with giving diapers and blankets and baby supplies to moms who are hurting and you can get connected with Love Inc and you can support them financially or as a volunteer. I also mentioned Embrace Grace which is a newer organization specifically designed to help moms who are choosing life. Embrace Grace has an office in Grace Church out of Eden Prairie. There's also another one in an Assemblies of God Church in Wilmer. It would be wonderful to see an Embrace Grace ministry start a little bit closer to home, but there are some opportunities to get involved with those organizations, to volunteer your time, to give financially. 
we also talked about the inner city crisis and to find a Christian crisis pregnancy center in Minneapolis would be a good use of your time. So there are some wonderful ways to get involved. The, the third and final question that I wanted to address in this short video is what should we do if we know of a young lady who finds herself suddenly pregnant and doesn't know what to do? You know, the best answer I can give you is that as the Church of Jesus Christ, I believe, especially in light of what we learned on Sunday, we want to rally around this mom. We want to care for her. We want to love her. So please contact one of the elders here at the church. Contact one of our pastors on staff. We will help that young, confused, hurting, single mom find some hope. We will connect her with the right resources. We as a church would love to even come alongside of her. And we can be creative in finding ways to support and love. But we as a church want to put our money where our mouth is. We don't want to just say that we love and support single moms. We actually want to do it. So I will make you this promise as your pastor. If you know of someone that needs help and you bring them to our church, we will do everything we can to treat them the way Jesus would have us treat them, to love, to care, to support, to nurture, and to hopefully help raise up a child to know and love Jesus Christ. So that ends our brief Q&A time. Thank you guys so much for submitting questions. It's such an honor to tackle this topic with you, and it's a joy to be your pastor. Thanks for tuning in. You are loved.